What's going on, Notre Dame fans? Welcome into a new episode of Pod Like a Champion. If you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes or however the heck you listen to your podcast, nothing's changed, obviously. You're listening to the show. But we're introducing, like we have on our Irish Huddle, which is our um, Notre Dame team, where we just kind of focus on what's going on with the team. We've been doing the Zoom podcasts with uh, Lou Samoji and, um, and Mike Goolsby. Um, that you can find on YouTube, but we're introducing the Zoom on our recruiting podcast. And uh, I'm your host, Mike Singer, recruiting insider at blueandgold.com, and I'm joined by Patrick Dingle. I think, Patrick, I called you our esteemed beat writer a couple weeks ago, so. That's right. Um, you need a new adjective for every single time. What, what, what should I call you this week? Um, the great Patrick Dingle. How about there we that? go. There we the go. Great Patrick Sounds historic. Dingle. Uh, Patrick's been with us for what three months now. So, yeah, that's about right. Uh, and uh, he's our beat writer, so he covers all things with the Notre Dame football team. But he's also kind of our um, uh, helps out with football recruiting and, and follows that. And he's also our basketball recruiting guy, uh, Patrick and I. Um, we'll get into a little bit of basketball recruiting later on the show. Um, but to start, Patrick, um, so I mean, right now we're recording. Uh, pod like a champion every other week during the off season. And then in the weeks we don't record, we have our Irish huddle with Lou and Goolsby. So since our last time we recorded, which was June 2nd, Notre Dame landed um, Ryan Barnes, six foot two, 180 pound cornerback from Gaithersburg, Maryland, Quince Orchard. And we talked about him with Goolsby and uh, Samoji, but we wanted to touch on him, um, especially with the segment we're going to get into here. Um, we would certainly uh, discuss Barnes, and, and we'll get into that here in, in a little bit. But um, just to touch on Barnes, um, and, and I think in a month month ago, we, we really went in-depth on what the impact was. But, um, Patrick, just how big, in your opinion, is this commitment for Notre Dame? I mean, it's definitely just good to have another guy you can land in the middle of all this who was comfortable enough with Notre Dame and the staff and the job they did particularly with Mike Mickens, corners coach, Terry Joseph, safeties coach, to be able to understand kind of what he, he likes about it and get the comfort to commit without a visit, especially considering the Notre Dame offered him, I believe, in March. So it all moved pretty quickly to be able to get there. And I know we touched on this in the last podcast, but definitely the type of guy in the mold of those kind of either position defensive backs that – you can kind of see reasonably right now if he ends up at safety for Notre Dame, if he ends up sticking a corner, and definitely the type of guy who would fit in the the class with kind of your pure corner and Philip Riley, and then the natural safety, maybe even a couple of cheeseburgers away from being a, a rover type guy, <laughs> Justin Walters. So right. definitely like the kind of fit there as far as how they're composing the, the defensive back group. And another a good job by, by Notre Dame to be able to kind of facilitate this all remotely and pretty quickly all things considered uh, the biggest thing for me right now is just how much of a Notre Dame fit he is he is such an outstanding kid he comes from such a great family um a great high school um you know just across the board he, he's an excellent Notre Dame fit and then the second thing is just don't be fooled by his ranking as we record this June 16th, 2020, he's ranked as a 5.6, which is the um, mid-level three-star, which a 5.7 would be high, three-star, 5.5 below. How they started at in, in, in the fives, I, I don't really know, but... Um, Great mystery of recruiting. He's much better in my... If I were the talent scouts or analysts at Rival, I, in my opinion, he's a 5.8, but... Um, at least 5.9 might be pushing it, but 5.8 inside the top 250 is where I would have him personally. Um, but I know that Rivals wants to see him in person. Um, and again, it's it's June. Like there, there's going to be a few more evaluation periods. Cross my fingers, you know. With we hope knows, yeah. Who knows what the rest of this year looks like with with everything going on um, with COVID and. And travel and everything but again yeah big huge pickup for Notre Dame three defensive back commits by this this time last year Notre Dame was really just starting to get its defensive back commits 
in the 2020 class. And, you know, I like those guys they got, but this, this DB class is already um, head and shoulders above uh, that class. So like I mentioned earlier, kind of the main segment we would have included Ryan Barnes in if we had done this, if we had done this a month ago. And it is, who are the three most important prospects left on the board for Notre Dame in the 2021 class? And I texted Patrick like an hour before we started recording. I was like, Patrick, just to be clear, this isn't the most talented. Um, if we're talking most talented, my list might be a little bit different, not a whole lot different. Um, and I'll explain, but Patrick, tell me for you, your most three, and here are the rules. I also went over with Patrick here. Can't be committed to Notre Dame. Because if we're talking who's the most important prospects in the 21 class for Notre Dame, I would say Tyler Buckner, Blake Fisher, Lorenzo Styles. Like, Guys they already have, exactly. Exactly, yeah. So they already have them. Um, I think you can make the argument that it, those are the most three talented players um, you know, that Notre Dame – um, it's currently in the mix with if you take into account committed guys and uncommitted guys targets, if that makes sense. So they can't be committed to Notre Dame, can't be committed to another school. Cause then that just opens a whole different, I mean, now, now you're talking about so many guys, like if it's a guy who Notre Dame was after that it's committed elsewhere, that just really opens the box. And it's like, where do we kind of draw the line with how realistic that is and not. So we decided just no, no prospects committed to another school. And third, the prospect has to be within the realm of possibility. Like five-star no quarterback. Corey Foreman. Yeah, no Corey Foreman, <laughs> number one player in the country who Notre Dame offered but never really got in the mix for. No five-star cornerback Tony Grimes, who's personally my favorite recruit in the 2021 class. You know, Notre Dame was after him, but that really went nowhere. So it's got to be realistic. So with all that being said, Patrick, your most three – or three most important prospects left on the board for Notre Dame in the 21 class and give us a little take on why. So I'll count, kind of count this down here from three to two to one. And wow. This, the third list one these I would... days are never in order. So I'm um, <laughs> recruiting, recruiting lists are never in order. All right. I, I like it. So I'll start third year and I'll go with athlete Titus Makayo Altamalala out of Hawaii. Set it and... with confidence. You nailed that. Just I don't know rolls if that's tongue, you know? I don't know. I don't know if that's right, but you nailed it. <laughs> First, you would give Notre Dame kind of a flexibility of you know looking at him as an athlete, could end up at safety, wanting to add to another uh, you know, defensive, add to that defensive back class that we just talked about, kind of seemingly a safety who you know, maybe could end up at either one of those spots or put him at wide receiver if that's what Notre Dame wants to do. Certainly, that position in the class is still kind of a lot to be sorted out there behind Lorenzo Styles, So the fit, I think, would be really good. And another one of those guys who, obviously, location here makes it a lot harder to get on any visits or on official visits, depending on, of course, how willing people are to travel during all this and even, you know, what does the NCAA's policy on visits with the dead period end up being or individual institutions if they just decide no we're not going to have kids on campus for but Hawaii the game Hawaii is basically in the backyard for Notre Dame with how well they recruit there exactly and that is kind of why you look at all right he has you know they've they've been able to get guys out of there there can be a lot of I guess kind of look at it in, in recent history and say these guys have been successful there and it, seemingly, you know, by at least you can assume by that they've stayed and played, that it's been an enjoyable experience. And if it comes down to something that guys can't really take a lot of visits, this is one that I would think that Notre Dame would be in a really good position to be able to get in that kind of circumstance. And one that they really kind of should be able to win or in a good spot, especially if it you know, comes down to he's kind of having to make a decision based on comfort and not necessarily what he would have seen on campus and not an official visit it's supposed to happen earlier this year obviously wiped out so one I think that's in terms of fit and necessity to land and ability to land kind of an important target just to get in the class I like it I like it all right number two I'm gonna go with Logan Diggs the running back out of Louisiana now I'm, as far as talented uh you know I was looking at the running back board Donovan Edwards would certainly be on there. 
Notre Dame's still going to have a shot. He's visited. But this is an interesting one, I think, that would make the kind of post-Will Shipley fallout at least a little more interesting or successful to where, all right, we talked about the Shipley strategy on an earlier podcast where to take the to sw- the swing and, and beat the Clemsons on the field, you got to beat them on the recruiting trail. And the, as Michael Scott would quote Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots <laughs> you don't take. But now when you don't get them, it becomes – part of the problem and at least just part of the rest of the class dilemma, whatever you want to call it. And Diggs being someone that they offered after the, after Shipley committed, that is uh, kind of another target who, of course, not quite the pedigree of Shipley, but a a good player who could help them. And another kind of deal where possibly would have to win it without visiting, but between what Diggs would bring, where Notre Dame is kind of, at in that recruitment who's else in the picture from Louisiana LSU has not offered at least not at this point close. yet they're close uh, from I, I talked to Diggs on uh, Sunday uh, so look out for that article Wednesday June 17th I'll have that on blue and gold so definitely kind of something to watch there if he if he does pick up that LSU offer but let's just kind of say this one extends out for a little while and the dead period extends could Notre Dame end up being in a spot where it has enough comfort with him and uh, to be able to pick up a commitment there, especially if LSU doesn't end up being an option a little bit or its priorities are elsewhere in the running back or whatever that offer ends up meaning to him. Patrick, you, you mentioned, you know, a couple times here, you know, what if they can't visit, what if they can't visit Brian Kelly in his press conference, can you speak about what, what Kelly said? Cause he was basically like, Hey, we're under the assumption we're going to prepare as if we can't have any visits the rest of the exactly. year. And going off that, I, I kind of made this list under the assumption of let's just say no one's going to visit. And given that, what becomes most important? And Dej is kind of somebody in that mold of, all right, not a reach slash kind of in pretty good position as it stands right now and someone who seems to have at least had enough of the comfort uh, in this virtual world that Notre Dame could be in a pretty good position to land, uh, provided that, you know, LSU doesn't end up putting the, you know, the full court press on here. So, and just given the importance of running back in this class, I'm going to say Logan Diggs would be a, just kind of a nice storyline and, and kind of softer landing to a degree, most shipley if they're able to, to get him. I just got a text from a recruit who I considered on my list, which is just kind of, yeah, funny. didn't, he didn't make it. I'm not going to say who texted me, but uh, <laughs> going to your number must one. Have known. Read your mind. <laughs> he's, he's, he's trying to me. get on that, trying to slide on that list. <laughs> Patrick, I love your wit, man. All right. Uh, number one. So you had Titus. I can't, I'm not going to, I can't pronounce his last name as good as you can. So anytime, if he ends up in Notre Dame, anytime he does something in a game or anything, it's going to be TMA on Twitter or on the message board. Just like this year, my is going to be MTA. Yeah. I'm very good at spelling. Good. Got it programmed into your computer's word memory at this point. <laughs> All right. So you have Titus number three, Logan Diggs number two. Who's your number one? This is easy. Rocco Spindler. And kind of going on the same idea of, all right, let's assume nobody visits and meaning Spindler, of course, being in the kind of the thing is kind of being pretty firm and saying, I'm not deciding until I take all these visits. Let's say you wipe those. Did you say out. Pre- now, he's been I mean, pretty firm. He's been very, yeah, that's very putting it mildly. <laughs> yeah. And a lot, even then a lot of the, most of the contenders in his top five, I believe he has visited. You can fill in any details there if I'm wrong on that, Mike. I think but, all of them except for LSU. So his top five is Michigan, sense. Michigan, Notre Dame, Penn State, Ohio State, LSU. And he's been all of them except for LSU, which like, yeah, does make locally. sense. You're right. And so it would be nice for Notre Dame above all just to win a recruitment that they would have been in for oh, two plus years at that point. And you can say like, all right, it's it's just kind of a good thing for them to do in their recruiting efforts too. All right, identify a target in you know when he's a early in his sophomore year in high school, mm-hmm. stay in there for the entire time and land him on signing day or whatever he might decide to commit. And then Notre Dame got Buckner, 
early on, like Fisher early, some of those guys early, but to be able to contend in a recruitment with a lot of these teams that they keep running into on the recruiting trail. And obviously, you know, Ohio State's case, someone they're going to play in a couple of years yeah. and has been at that level that, of course, everybody wants Notre Dame's recruiting operation to, in an ideal world, get to. That's just a battle you you want to be able to win. And, of course, where it is offensive line class is kind of taking shape, kind of the interior linemen that you can just kind of pretty projectively say would profile as an eventual starter for, for Notre Dame. So as far as impact on the field, being able to beat out a lot of these teams you run up against and outdo them over the course of two plus years. And all right, if this is what's left that you can do as far as not visiting, you're relying on previous visits he's been to and all the pitch you've been able to, to throw at him so far, if that ends up being good enough, I think that'd be a, a, a big kind of boost and, and credit you can give Notre Dame in, in this spot if he's able to end up there. All right, I'll go, I'll get right into my, my three and I'll start with Spindler. I'm not going to give an order because I, I didn't really give it that much thought. So I have Spindler in mind and if, if it was talent, Right, because I only have one offensive lineman on my list. But if we're talking about talent, I would say Rucci over Spindler. And Patrick, we did a video on uh, we posted on YouTube where we talked about who's the most important recruit. So we've kind of touched on this topic. Now right, I'm and I said it. Spindler then, and I will now. Naturally. Yeah, I I said Spindler, but I discussed and and just rambled on that I think Nolan Rucci is the better prospect yes is, is a left tackle or a left guard more important uh, left or left tackle I think Nolan yes Rucci's you want the get, tackle I think Nolan Rucci's a first round player I don't say that often I don't like ranking sites um you know rating a prospect with NFL potential I, I think that's tough to say ranking a kid who just like finished up this sophomore year of high school we're saying if we think you're gonna be a first round pick or not like that's that's really tough to say um but Rucci is someone I man the the just his size his uh bloodlines uh his film to me he's a first rounder but I went with Spindler for this because of some of the points you made like they've been in this recruitment since I think it was September 2018 they offered around that time um and the offensive line board back then, like when Notre Dame was really just getting involved in those recruitments, Garrett Dellinger, Spiller's teammate, you know, Rucci, um, you know, they're offering all these big time guys and the media really hyped up that Notre Dame was going to have this just elite offensive line class um, uh, in, in 2021. So I understand Notre Dame fans disappointment um in 2021 when um they missed out on a lot of those guys um that they'd offer you know, Ruben Fothery, Tommy Brockermeyer, a five-star guy who visited Tommy Tommy did uh Ruben Fothery did wasn't able to visit he committed to Texas A&M and then you even look at some of the guys they offered this spring Caleb Johnson committed to Auburn and he's uh from Fort Wayne um you had Matthew Wyckoff commit to Texas A&M I'm, you know, I'm sure there's um Sure, there's some other, you know, Tristan Bounds just committed to Michigan. Right. So, you know, the, there's definitely guys, you know, who Notre Dame has missed on. So I understand the, the frustration there. So, and I'm not trying to minimize Rocco Spindler's talents because the dude can play. Um, up until a few months ago, I was never even ruling out that he could play tackle at Notre Dame. Like, I could see him as a right tackle. I think some schools are even kind of talking about tackle still, but I don't really think he'll end up there. Um, but, you know, as a guard, he is elite. Like he is, he's an impact guard. And, and like we said, tackles a more important position, but he's an impact player at guard, which you typically don't use impact player at guard a ton, but Spindler is that. Um, and they exist. Yeah, absolutely. You still want impact guards. If yeah. Quentin you Nelson. Liabilities up there. Exactly. Impact guard. And um, I remember talking to Spindler after he visited for the USC game in October, which was his last time in South Bend. And he sat down with Quinn in his office and, and the pitch was like, you know, we think you're Quentin Nelson. Like, you know, we, we think you can be better than Quentin Nelson, like at Notre Dame. And 
Um, so that's certainly a pitch that Spindler would like to hear. And I remember talking on the phone and joking with him. I was like, dude, I'm about to throw in a future cast for you to go to Notre Dame. Like that's, um, you know, you, you really love and uh, talking about the Irish and, and, you know, he laughed and, um, and I did end up throwing in that pick back in March. Um, don't love it. Like I'm not like in love with that pick right now uh, because I don't, he, he hasn't decided. Like he really hasn't, like there's no, wink wink I'm going to Notre Dame like there's nothing like that going on um at least according to my intel um so I don't know how you could be super confident in it um especially if he's wanting to take all of his official visits then it's like man who knows when that'll be and the timeline is he 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 might as well be a 2022 recruit because he might not decide this year (laughs) like um so with all that being said yeah Spindler from just a job standpoint for me, if Spindler doesn't commit to Notre Dame, I mean, I'm just going to try to take off that day. He, if he commits elsewhere, because <laughs> let's just let Patrick monitor the message board. So just from a yeah, Rockney's roundtable is going to burn to the ground oh, if that, whenever, if that happens, just board it up. Yeah. Yeah. Just that'll be don't, a, don't check it. Yeah, that'll be uh, quite the day. It's, it, it, it'll be borderline like the first series against Louisville last year. Like, <laughs> you know, pitchforks were coming out. That, jump in you know, and pitchforks. And yeah, that all, Notre Dame. The apocalypse. Didn't, that Notre Dame didn't yes. score four touchdowns in the first quarter. Um, so that, uh, Spindler. All right, so we agree on Spindler. My next two guys, we don't. Um, so you went with Logan Diggs, which I consider Diggs. That's not the guy who texted me, by the way. Um, I consider Diggs, but I was like, Donovan Edwards doesn't, like, break any of those rules. Like, he still is realistic to Notre Dame. If you made me pick right now, I'd say Michigan. I don't have a future cast pick in right now because, like Spindler, Donovan Edwards is playing the long game. So, yeah, I – I think Don. I mean, Donovan Edwards is still very much on the board. Notre Dame still very much on them hard. So, uh, as long as there's a pulse there, and Notre Dame, you know, like it, let's say Logan Diggs commits at the end of the month or something, which I, I don't expect to happen. Let's just say Logan Diggs commits. I would still even. This isn't something I've talked to sources about, but I would I wouldn't be surprised if Notre Dame was like still kind of you know keeping Edwards warm because if, if Edwards wanted to commit with Diggs, I would imagine they'd want to take two backs. But um, I wouldn't it, think there's a situation in which you turn him away. Yeah, that would be really difficult to do. I mean, Donovan Edwards is a um, you know five foot eleven, hundred ninety three pounds, number two running back in the country, number sixty one player overall. Not that rivals rankings equals you're really good, but like Edwards is. You know, he's got 45 offers for a reason. He's a really good football player. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you're going to ask me who, who's a better player, Donovan Edwards or Logan Diggs, I'd probably say Donovan Edwards. Um, and I would too. Yeah. And I kind of went with Diggs in the sense. I guess you can kind of look at either one. as a different resolution to the Shipley recruitment. Where Diggs, okay, they offered this guy and they got him later thinking, all right, your plan B or whatever is wasn't a disaster no edwards in the sense it's all right shipley was the main target okay he goes elsewhere and if if Notre Dame can get him you can kind of say all right we did all this we pushed hard for shipley and you get just as good of a prospect get a guy that you were still on didn't stop talking to for however many years two years another kid who got an offer as a freshman or something like that. yeah he so he got that offer before lance even before lance taylor's coaching at Notre dame um Edwards offered December 2018 I want to say so yeah Notre Dame was in early on that recruitment um so that's that's my number two two guy um or that's my second guy I mentioned here I'm not not giving an order but yeah from, from, like Spindler with an optic standpoint it's like you know that would be a huge recruiting win from a talent standpoint from we just got a guy um in the Detroit area beat out Michigan that would be huge like in LSU is on his offer list. LSU wants some like long, I mean, long offer list, Alabama offer, like everybody. Um, so Edwards is on there. My number three, sorry, I got to stop saying that. The third guy I'm mentioning here. Brady and uh, Slip here. I know, right. Um, is Prince Colley. 
from your favorite high school in Jonesboro, Tennessee. Yes. David Crockett. Hi. Shouts um, to Davy Crockett. This is a guy who caught 68 passes as a receiver last year. Um, listed as an athlete, 6'2", 205. Um, Rivals has him ranked as a 5.63 star, which is that same ranking as Ryan Barnes. Logan Diggs is a 5.63 star, um, that mid-level designation uh, of three-star ranking. Um, but again, disagree with that one. The kid's a freaking stud, man. Uh, Alabama, LSU, Georgia, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas offers like um, his top 10 is Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, LSU, Louisville, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, Wake Forest. Is that 10? Yeah, that's 10. Um, uh, I mean, this kid can seriously do it all. I talked to a, a source and um, basically said, you know, was, you know, Prince Colley, you know, Rover guy. And it's like, Prince Colley can do whatever the heck he wants. Like, that's seriously what, what one of my sources told me about this kid. Like, uh, I, I think Notre Dame would like him at Rover, but seriously, uh, he could be an inside guy. Um, he could play safety. Like, he's like Drew Tranquil moved around so much. Like, Prince Colley is a guy who, man sky's really the limit for that kid so i go back to just from a fan perspective like how would my message board feel like if notre dame got prince collie and they get a linebacker recruit for the first time in two years because again notre dame passed in 2020 um and they took four in 2019 i think it was seven or eight and and from 2018 to 2019 class they they took just a ton so they passed in 2020 um but, but i will say with notre dame you don't know like if a guy they take him at safety like maybe they really do project them to rover and, and maybe one day a buck like you just you don't know what notre dame's up to sometimes with with their um uh, with their back seven recruiting really um yeah, or yeah yeah back seven yeah any of them could end up in any of these spots sometimes it's like you just don't even know what notre dame's what that staff's um uh, kind of scheming with some of these guys but collie um he's just a dude like that's a that's an sec difference maker type player so notre dame's able to pull him out of um jonesboro tennessee uh that would be a, a huge get um definitely a fit in the clark lee man of mystery put these guys wherever kind of thing. the versatility is definitely there with with prince collie and you know linebacker recruiting being you know, whatever it's going to be this year if you take one guy It'd be nice if it were someone who could <laughs> right. conceivably end up at a couple of different spots. Sure. Absolutely. So, um, who do you guys think had the better top three? I think it's me, but um, <laughs> um, but uh, we're we're gonna read a quick ad. We we've got plenty more to talk about, um, but let's hear from Trade Lasts, which is a Notre Dame Idea Center startup that has pivoted its business model to a not-for-profit initiative to serve the medical responders selflessly sacrificing themselves during the crisis. They're doing so by providing free vacations post-crisis for the responders so that they can recover from the trauma they have experienced and reconnect with their families. Please consider helping this important initiative started by Notre Dame alums and staffed by Notre Dame student volunteers by visiting their website, tradelasts.com and donating time in your second home spreading the word to others or supporting their GoFundMe page. Again, that's tradelasts.com. Thank you for supporting this deserving Notre Dame initiative. All right, Patrick, let's hit the quick hitters. All right. This is our, uh, we end the, our pod by, uh, look, here's some quick hitting news and notes in the world of Notre Dame recruiting. And we're going to start with basketball recruiting. So Monday began the, um, a period where uh, basketball coaches can start reaching out directly to recruits in the 2022 class. So it's not, Hey, have your coach call me at this time or, you know, the, like you, you to reach out venting ways. Yeah, exactly. So now, Hey, direct line of contact me to the kid. It's not, I got to text the high school coach, text the AAU coach to, Hey, have this kid call me. Uh, none of that anymore. It's direct. So Notre Dame got busy offered a couple kids Patrick who were they and just how talented so the first offer went out to Donovan Klingen he's a top 50 center 
in the 2022 class out of Connecticut. And considering who one of the biggest 2020 targets was, Hunter Dickinson, Notre Dame went right back to a similar mold in a seven foot guy who's kind of just a natural interior scorer, really fluid. He's a post scorer, comfortable going over either shoulder. Great jump shot. Just, <laughs> He's a modern a, day big, modern day big for sure. Definitely has some you know, projectability with with the jump shot as kind of a at least, maybe at least a standstill shooter or something. Uh, obviously, it, it being seven foot, you're going to be a defensive weapon, especially getting blocks. And you definitely like to see that he's not just kind of out there hunting blocks as a help defender, where he can run guys down and kind of chase guys out with that length and, and block some jumpers. So it makes a lot of sense that Notre Dame would target someone like him who looks just like one of their biggest targets in 2020 and definitely kind of offers a little bit of playmaking ability as well, which you want to see in, in the spacing and the you know assists per game, low turnover kind of emphasis that you know, Notre Dame's offense already has. As a passer, he has a pretty natural feel where you're not going to worry about him or getting double teamed and all right, just, they get some automatic turnover. Now he's, he'll be able to pass out of that. It won't stall your offense and kind of look at thinking, all right, you can pass on the short roll, uh, find guys in, in transition if need be, find guys when he draws a double team and, and kicks back out. So really like the, the fit and the early emphasis on Donovan Klingon for Notre Dame. And then went out to uh, offer number two, uh, Prince Oligbe. He's a wing from Minneapolis, number 49 overall player. Picked up offers before he'd even played a minute of high school basketball. Shout out to Slick Rick Stansbury at Western Kentucky, offering him as a freshman. Uh, plays on a kind of loaded high school team with Chet Holmgren, top 10 recruit in the 2021 class. Jalen Suggs, a top five kid in 2020, who was also a highly regarded quarterback. He's going to play point guard for Gonzaga. Plays on the same AAU team as them as well. Big time athlete and at the wing spot. Uh, really developed, filled out six, seven frame for a kid who just finished his sophomore year. So definitely see this as kind of a guy who can turn into kind of one of those big wing go-to scorers and probably someone who still continues to improve as a three-point shooter. So I like both of these offers here for, for Notre Dame and just kind of seeing as what they've liked to go to in the past and kind of what might be a little bit you know, lacking at the time on the roster when you rolled around to the 2022 class and these guys actually getting on campus and swing for the fences when you offer these kids early right I mean they no question that's what they're doing man um Klingon just picked up a Michigan State offer not that there was any doubt that he was already kind of big time but you certainly see the history of uh big men there and uh when Michigan State goes after one of them now you kind of think all right that's a little bit more you know credibility to you know what these guys can do and especially as a center Another quick word from our sponsors. Uh, looking for that Notre Dame item for the Irish fan in your life? Visit Augie's Locker Room, the country's number one Notre Dame memorabilia shop. They have the largest selection of Notre Dame helmets dating all the way back to the turn of the century up to present day, including the Shamrock Series helmet. They also have stadium benches, frame tickets, one-of-a-kind rock knee items, signed items, and many other unique pieces. If it's Notre Dame, they have what you're looking for. Visit them online at augieslockerroom.com or call 574-277-NDND. That's augieslockerroom.com. Patrick, a few more quick hitters. What do we got? Let's move on to football. Still some action. Uh, but some, a new offer being tossed out there on Monday night, the 15th. Colin Sadler, he's a 2022 offensive lineman from South Carolina. Has offers from Clemson, Georgia, LSU, a bunch of the big brands and whatnot. Notre Dame just hopped in. Mike, do you think they can beat some of those other teams and grab Colin Sadler out of SEC slash Clemson territory? Yeah, Clemson territory. So the one uh, that I'd be most worried about. Um, he visited Notre Dame last November, um, had a really good experience. I mean, he played a Friday night, drove up to, <laughs> to Notre wow. Dame midnight. Yeah, he got hurt that Friday night. So they didn't get to leave South Carolina until 1 a.m. And Oof. it's got to be, what, a 10-hour drive or something. So um, Kid wanted to be there. Yeah, clearly. And um, he had told me um, after that visit that, hey, if Notre Dame offers me, you know, that, that's definitely going to be a school I'm going to consider. Um, 
when they offered, or I'm sorry, when he visited, he had like three offers, like Virginia Tech, um, uh, a couple other local schools. Like it, it was a, a, a 2022 guy to just to keep an eye on. Well, now he's got those offers that you mentioned. He's just blown up. He's been shocked by how much this recruiting process has taken off in, in just the span of, um, of the past few months. As a, a guy who lives and breathes called football recruiting, like literally my life, um, don't, don't, don't tell my wife, but my life has been college football recruiting. Um, there's been so many stories like where it's just these kids are just getting offers during this quarantine period. Like Drew Shelton, a uh, guy who I wrote an article about over the um, weekend at blueandgold.com, his first offer was late March. And now uh, like he played his entire sophomore season, January contact period when coaches are on the road. He didn't have any offers. The only time he told me he had ever talked to a coach is when they would stop by the school and like his high school coach would put him in front of the college coach and be like, Hey, shake hands, bump into each other. Um, and here he is. He's got Michigan, Notre Dame. Like he's got all these big time offers. Now Drew Shelton's like, Holy crap. Like I had, I had it's been a whirlwind. So Colin Sadler, it's, it's been a whirlwind recruitment for him. Notre Dame's got a really good shot. Um, but man, Clemson, like if Clemson weren't involved, um, like, I, I would think that the shot would be even better. Like, there's already three future cast picks for Sadler, who's a 6'6", 300-pounder, um, to land at Clemson, and which would include um, Paul Strilo, who's our Clemson insider for rivals. So, um, you know, it, good offer. I think Notre Dame can win that recruitment, but it, it's going to be tough. Staying on 2022, Caden Saunders, wide receiver out of the Columbus area, put Notre Dame in his top seven, released a few days ago, earlier in June. Mike, who's the competition? Where does Notre Dame stand? Give us the skinny on Caden Saunders. Yeah, so top group consists of Arizona State, Indiana, Michigan, Notre Dame, Penn State, TCU, and West Virginia. And then he, he put that top group out last Tuesday, June 9th, and then the next day, um, Texas offered. So Texas is kind of in the mix now. <laughs> Um, as well so I'll have an article up on him um, Wednesday June 17th and then in the afternoon so make sure to check that out at blueandgold.com but uh, it was really good timing for Notre Dame because like just a few hours before he put out that top group um, Dell Alexander got on the phone with them and um, it's like hey we're still here like they hadn't been in too much contact but you know Dell had a good call with him the next day got on a call with Tommy Reese and that went really well so make sure you check the details out um, on Caden, Caden Saunders at blueandgold.com. Um, he wants to maybe even commit this fall. September 25th is his birthday, and he's potentially eyeing that for a commitment. And um, I'd probably say Penn State is the team to beat, but I see it as a three-horse race uh, between Michigan, Notre Dame, and Penn State. And those three schools compete against each other a lot on the recruiting front. And uh, here's Saunders, who's right now just a rising junior, and uh, he's looking to make an early commitment, which we see each each recruiting cycle. It's prospects are committing earlier and earlier, and Sanders is um, maybe looking to continue that trend. And each cycle, it seems, you get Notre Dame, Michigan, Penn State, all recruiting against each other, recruiting the same kids from the Midwest footprint-ish. So just another one in a long line of those battles. Going back to 2021, one final little item here, kind of a little feel-good thing. Gabriel Rubio, Notre Dame defensive tackle commit, just decided to last weekend just go up to South Bend, check it out. Not a you know a visit with the coaches and violating any dead period rules or anything like that. Just decided to check it out on the way back. Went and hung out with Blake Fisher in Indianapolis. Like pretty cool little thing to see during quarantine that these guys are making an effort to get to know each other even more. Yeah, the camaraderie in the 2021 class is, is really good. Um, you know, obviously, those guys got a group chat. Every school um, who's got the commits, they, I mean, those guys are in touch with each other, one form or the other, whether it's on Snapchat, they'll have like a group Snapchat or whatever. Maybe Notre Dame commits even had that, but I know they have a text exchange. And um, Blake and Gabriel are both uh, – vocal guys for Notre Dame. Um, Rubio, not as much as, as Fisher, but, uh, you know, Rubio. That'd be impossible to match. <laughs> Rubio is, uh, 
Um, just his energy is just such a pause. He's such a positive guy. Like, uh, uh, I know you've been able to speak with his dad. I met, um, um, Angel Rubio, Gabriel's dad, when I was out in St. Louis last fall and got to meet Gabriel for the first time, just such good dudes. And, um, Gabriel is every bit of, you know, six, five, 300, but his dad is, 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 I think a couple inches taller, like his dad is huge too. So, um, played in the NFL, played for the Niners, I want to say, and, um, you know, 20 years ago or so, um, yeah, Blake Fisher, obviously connecting with, with Rubio when they've met in person before at least three times. Um, so here's, here's number four or five or something. So here, here's a little tidbit on Rubio. I don't think I've ever put this on our message board or anything. So for our listeners, this is a little tidbit for you. Rubio is very solid in his Notre Dame commitment. He committed to the Fighting Irish um, June 15th last year. So he's been committed for a year now. Um, other schools have not given up on recruiting Gabe Rubio. He made that early commitment. Um, he's rated right around 100 in the country. So makes the early commitment. People kind of forget uh, about prospects sometimes when they commit early. But people are still coming after Rubio. I know – LSU has never given up on recruiting Gabriel Rubio, again, defending national championship um, team. Um, at least they hadn't with well, the last time I kind of checked in on that front. Um, but for a while, at least, they were very active uh, in, in trying to get him. And uh, Rubio is very solid in his Notre Dame commitment. He's, he's respectful to those schools, but he tells them where he's at, like, hey, I'm committed to Notre Dame. So the tidbit here is that to c- continue to remind – um, himself, why I pick Notre Dame, why I love Notre Dame. I, I want to go to Notre Dame as much as I can. It's not an easy short trip from St. Louis to South Bend, um, but it's really important for that Ruby to the Rubio family. Let's get there as much as we can. Like we made this commitment to Notre Dame, we're going to stick with our word. So while these other schools are trying to sell us on their glitz and gra- glamour of why we should go there, the Rubio family's like, look, we're going to stick with Notre Dame. We're going to go there as much as possible to continue to soak in South Bend. Um, again, like you mentioned, there, there's nothing going on in, in South Bend. Like he can't get into the building. Like he can't go walk around the, the facilities and the locker room and talk to the coach. Like he can't do any of that. He went there um, for one to do something with the family, but just to continue to remind himself, this is why I picked Notre Dame. Um, in this 2021 class, people are going to always talk about, like we even mentioned, who's the most, uh, important guys for Notre Dame. Well, if we included the commit list, I said Buckner, um, Fisher, and Styles. I I even forgot about Rubio. Like people forget about Gabriel Rubio. Um, the dude is an absolute stud. Um, broke records um, at, during his junior season. Won all sorts of awards. Dominated. Um, so I think he had like a ten sack game or something ridiculous um, last fall. So. That's my Gabriel Rubio. I, I love the kid. I mean, you you talked to his dad. I mean, just an awesome family. Undeniably. And kind of the the one thing that I guess you can do right now and the last thing to, like you said, remind themselves of why they're here is they make a, what well, I'm assuming a five or six hour drive at the time zone change seem like habit or not a big yeah. deal. And just only to increase – his own and his family's comfort with, you know, whatever else they feel like they would want to reinforce. So just I, I kind wanna, of a neat, neat yeah. thing there that they're doing uh, I, to solidify that. Not that it really exactly. needed it in the first place. But. Exactly. I want to say he visited three games last year. Uh, I know it was Virginia, USC, and I want to say it was either Navy or Boston College. I mean, he's playing Friday nights. He's going to, you know, making that trip. So, um, I, I can't say enough good things about him um, on the field. He worked really hard in the classroom to even get that Notre Dame offer. Like he wanted to really get his grades up so that he could get that and um, worked really hard. And he's just an awesome kid. So and that, when, when you cover recruiting, there's a lot of just head scratching stuff, but um, with, with someone like Rubio, which is, um, it really makes up for all that and even the doubt. So um, that's going to do it for this episode of Paul Like a Champion. Again, if you're 
just listen to the audio version, you can follow us on YouTube, subscribe and get notifications. It's if you just search Blue and Gold Illustrated, uh, you can find us and, and listen to some of our recent podcasts, um, uh, really good stuff there. And uh, limited, on, limited time offer we have going on if you're not a blueandgold.com member and kind of maybe want to give us a shot. A great way to do that is uh, to use promo code MONTHLY20. So go to blueandgold.com. You'll see a banner um, at the top of the website that says limited time offer. Get a free t-shirt when you join blueandgold.com. Sign up for a monthly subscription and you get a um, free t-shirt at breakingtea.com up to a $28 value. Again, that's promo code MONTHLY20. Um, all the terms and conditions are um, on blueandgold.com. Um, can't miss it. Uh, any questions about that, shoot me an email, uh, msinger at blueandgold.com. If you ever have any questions that you want Patrick and I to discuss in our uh, pod like a champion, shoot me an email. If you want to tell us how great or handsome we looked, you've got my email. Uh, actually, you know, don't do that. That'd be a little weird. But you have my email. Shoot us questions. Um, for, for future episodes that you'd like us to tackle, or if you have any questions about our promo or um, anything not weird, you have my email. All right, that's <laughs> going to do it for this episode of Pod Like a Champion.